doesn't work. <laughs> anyway. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Painting with Friends. As usual, my name is Vaz Hayes, and today I am interviewing Quedro. He is a Ghanaian photographer, and recently he traveled all across the world searching for the best way to get an angle to show things in the dopest way possible. He has revolutionized how cameras work and the trick of the light in a camera. And I'm joking. But he has recently traveled to Ghana and come back with amazing pictures that he is setting up for an exhibit here at Open Spaces. Through August 19th through September 18th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be a very spectacular gallery. We already seen some of the pictures. We're blown away by them. We have some displays out in the window. They are amazing. I'm going to let you talk about how you stumbled upon this opportunity. How did you come to this center to present such an idea? I've never, I never would have thought. All right, so um, how it all started? Yeah, how it all started. Um, remember speaking to the mic. All right, so um, you can pull the mic closer to you too if you want. If you want to like. Uh, so that's a really um, funny how this happened. So I was, um, I had a shoot. Um, I had to do in um, is it one of the parks in Prince Williams County. So we were just out in the park. Yeah. So uh, I didn't really want to do the shoot that day because my client was really like about two or three hours late already. So Dang. I nearly canceled the shoot. So Dang. anyway, my did he ever show up? Yeah. Okay. She showed up and um, I had to do the shoot. So halfway through the shoot, um, I met this man. You met this man? I met this man. The, the person you were shooting for or, or, the, or someone I've never seen before. Very warm and nice. Uh -huh. He just said, oh, he handed me a flyer first and he was like, uh, you know, we haven't this event tomorrow in the same place. So if you would like to pass by and make some photographs for us, um, I would appreciate it. And you know what? There's a Ghanaian choir coming. And I'm like, how did this guy know I'm Ghanaian? Very because obvious. <laughs> he, 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 didn't, he didn't allow me to even say nothing. He just told me there's a Ghanaian choir coming. No, he, he probably just already had the Ghanaian choir. He, he probably didn't know. He just yeah, he knew I was African, but he didn't know which part of Africa I was coming from or yeah. which country I'm coming from. But when he said Ghanaian choir, I've been away for a while, so I really wanted to enjoy some good choir music from the Ghanaian choir. So I showed up. Was it good? It was it was awesome. Okay. So I showed up the next day. Uh-huh. And that's how it started. It was Herb. Herb? Yeah, it was So Herb. he invited you to the open art spaces and then he like presented you the It was it was in the park somewhere. Um I think that's in uh closer to Stafford. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, it was local, local shade, shade. Local, local shade, shade park. yeah, local shade park. I was just doing a random birthday shoot for one of my clients, so that was how I met Herb, and he invited me. So I showed him some of the works, and he, he was blown. He was like, "You know what? You need to do a show. You need to show your work." To yeah, you, people. you definitely do because these are spectacular. Yeah, I know. Some I'm, of the pictures that we've seen and some of the previews, they are spectacular. I'm glad that he reached out to you to do something like yeah, this. Yeah, because I've been I've been working on. Um, these documentary photographs for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. um, I think since 2014 or 12, they're about when I started doing um, photography seriously. So uh -huh. whenever I have a break, whenever I have, um, I have, Call, you call it vacation or something like that. I just travel around um, with my camera, sometimes with my brother. He's mm -hmm. also a photographer, so we just go around. We make images of what we see, mostly um, festivals and um, traditional ceremonies or events that people don't get to witness, even in Ghana. You know, most people live in the um, urban areas, so they don't get to see... Um, the traditional stuff that mostly happen in the rural areas yeah like areas i mean remote areas as you guys would say so you're you're like capturing um you're capturing the unseen unseen that mostly. is what like photographers do they they capture the marvel that most people don't get to capture with the naked eye that they don't see on social media every single day yeah because most of the stuff you see on social media are mostly um 
stuff you see in Accra, like the major the major cities in Ghana. You go to Takradi, you go to Kumasi, mm -hmm. you go to Accra, you go to mostly nightlife, clubs, yeah. like flashy cars and stuff like that. It's everywhere. You travel to Paris, you see the same thing. You go to Dubai, you see the same thing. Yeah. So there's nothing unique about it. So I just travel to very rural areas, stuff you do not see, like on the farms, people living in shirts, um, and having a, a happy life. Yeah. It's not like um, the regular, the yeah, not about the regular, like um, poor people. These are very happy people. Yeah. These are people living their lives accomplished, happy to the fullest, with no diseases. Mm -hmm. These are people who are living their lives the best that, um, that they can, you know. They are not impoverished people. They are really happy people. That's what I like to like document. I, I've noticed like from your pictures, like when you said like you're documenting ceremonies, you're documenting mm -hmm. um, things that people don't get to see. A lot of the pictures that you brought back, they are all ceremonies, majority. Most, yeah. Um, what type of ceremonies did you go out and capture while you were out in Ghana? So um, the setup in Ghana is mostly on um, ethnicity or tribes mm -hmm. we have several tribes we have like the most diverse languages you can meet i mean yeah. even in like we have several languages we have is it like dialect or is it like languages language? is language yeah how does that come about is it like um... true no um through our history most people migrated to from different parts of um, the world to settle in um, different, I mean, different parts of Africa to settle in present day Ghana. Uh, so it wasn't like a colonialism, like they just, um, no, they just had the map and they said, all of you are just gonna, no, 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 they came, just, they came over time, over you know, time, like, yeah, before mm -hmm. colonialism, mm -hmm. before colonialism, or um, someone named John. <laughs> that we put in Africa, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So before all that happened, like we had our ways. We had our ways. We do our stuff. We have our traditions, and most of the traditions are based on um, circumstances or um, events that happen. You know. Yeah. We have several. Um, how do you call it? Um, festivals, mm -hmm. and each festival will tell you a particular story. Because when you come to the um, capital of Ghana. Yeah. Um, that's Accra. It's mostly it's dominated by the Gans and the Adangbe people who are believed to have um, migrated from um, Egypt mm -hmm. all down to present day Ghana. Like um, some tell us they migrated even further than Egypt. So um, their festival is um, Homawo. Yeah. Homawo means um, hooting at hunger in their local language in Ghana. So um, why would someone want to put at hunger or say, um, yeah, let's say someone would like to put at hunger. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So it means through their journey, they suffered a lot because when you are migrating on foot, yeah, it's there were terrible. no cars. Yeah, it's no terrible. It's hot. hot. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> tons of flies. Yeah. You're gonna have a lot of hungry people. Um, yeah. Just a slight uh, break. Uh, we have one of our new hosts, Soup Doop, in the building. Um, Soup, if you want a chair, you can grab one from the back area so you don't have to stand. Get on camera? You, you can get on camera, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can grab I don't want you to stand there on top time. Huh? Sure. Um, they're all the way in the back. They're in the back room. Oh, Joey's here. First place in the chat. He's showing how y'all doing. We're doing amazing. We're interviewing Kodro. He is a Ghanaian photographer. So that's a little breakdown of how the region developed. Yeah, so the region basically was um, the regions. Right now, there are 16 bar. When I used to live in Ghana, mm -hmm. it was just 10. This 10, so now it's, it's 16. It's been like how long broken. Has it been? I've been out for close to four years. So in four years, it's yeah. added six more regions or tribes? Yeah, six more, no, not tribes, regions, like, regions. yeah. Okay. That's um, geographic, like, specific. So they've just been uh, broken down for development sake, you know, mm -hmm. when the people, uh, the population grows within a, uh, an area, they need to break it down so that 
that can be um, controlled, you know. Yeah, and they have like a good representation for themselves. Yeah, and their, yeah in, their in government, you know. But this has, um, what I'm talking about, the festivals has nothing to do with the government. It was before the government was formed. Yeah. We had our own um, ways of governing people, you know. Yeah. So when all these people traveled and settled in areas, whatever events that happened whilst they were migrating, yeah. they have festivals to reenact or to remember those kind of um, events. You know, so the guns have their homo war, the Ethiopian people have their Udra, the Asantis have their Apuesidae. Yeah. The um, people from the north, they are different tribes. They have their fire festivals, they have their yam festivals, wow. and they have several, like they have the Bakatwe in the, um, that's in the central region, which I've covered. Um, mm. And, a whole lot, like from the Volta region, they have the Tochugbe, they have um, the Hogbe Chocho, they have a whole lot, like there are several, some that I don't even know about. So whenever I hear um, there's some about to go down, yeah. all I do is just grab my bag, my cameras. And you just go? I just go. So how um, on your trip, in your travels, yeah. Um, how many different types of serpents were you able to capture? Countless, you know. Countless. <laughs> Countless. <Yeah. laughs> How many celebrations are you they like the party? Yeah, there's, there's the always party. like there's always something happening uh -huh. in a particular region. Yeah. Some are very popular mm -hmm. and some are like very um private, you know. We just like the rite of passage, like you know, when someone is giving birth to they do um the name and ceremony is different yeah. where we come from, depending on the tribe you belong to, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've been um, privileged to um, photograph some of those um, from the north. They have their way of doing it. And yeah. um, those from the south who have their way of doing it. And it's amazing. And um, through my travels, I've seen that in as much as we are different people, Yeah. We always have one common thing as um, black people, you know. What is that? I don't know. We we have something that makes us very unique, and um, I I know the feeling, but if we yeah, have it's words, so yeah because because there's like a camaraderie. Like whenever you, whenever we see like somebody who's also black, and it's like whenever you you meet them out in the streets or something, it's like. Like there's a common there's a common thing. Like if there's, it's a head nod, if it's like it's the way we there's say something. Things, it's it's, it's just. Like, even if you're it's just too. it's just spiritual you know yeah it, you you can't define it you can just relate to it you just feel it exactly. within you and it's it's just magical like i've had the opportunity to see like a lot of festivals um i think just about um less than three weeks i i was in ghana for private reasons and personal stuff so um, um my man's was getting married oh man, man. <laughs> Mr. Banks ain't just Mr. Banks alone. He got Mrs. Banks. Um, also, um, everybody out there, if you're at home, you can take up a pencil. You can take up some colors. You can draw two. Yeah. Draw along with this. Um, there's any colors for today. We're working with watercolors. So if you want to dip any of these in and you want to start going at it, you can. Right. I just need to sketch, but the think, conversation is just taking my attention away from no no, no you're you very know? into it i can tell that yeah. you're very passionate about yeah like, yeah yeah how I you get to try, how, like yeah what you're doing you have an extreme focus to and that's why the work yeah. it shows yeah. it definitely shows um i noticed like one of the ceremonies that you captured it looked like a funeral mm -hmm. and it was a funeral procession yeah um how did you go about getting access to that particular funeral that was um <laughs> that funeral was supposed to be um a very like i think the the highest like i don't know the right word to use but you can't just walk into that funeral no mm -hmm. because it's the funeral of um the asante Hene's mom the queen mother of the asantes if you've ever heard the asante tribe I've, I've never. You've not, you need to like. You need to read about the Asante tribe. Okay. They control a lot of gold. Need to, read to read up. Yeah, you need to read up. Like, 
one of the most powerful kingdoms in Africa, like the and in the world. Yeah, trust yeah. me. Yeah, they control a lot of gold. Ah, yeah. They say a lot of gold. And, All right, um, everybody, study up. Now we, yeah. now we really need to, we need to really do our research. They got money. They got a lot of money and mm -hmm. um, big money. They don't play with their culture, so they shut down the whole town or the whole region just for that. Um, how do you call it? That funeral. Mm -hmm. So the funeral, I think it was 21 days. Yeah. And um, I happened to, um, I was just trying my luck because I, I didn't get the invite to get into that funeral. How did you get into the funeral then if you didn't get the invite? Yeah. You, I, you crashed the funeral? Yeah, I did with my brother <laughs> because I can't, I can't, I can't miss that. You know, I need to like get the images so this is wild i've yeah this I is need a to. different type of crashing or funeral and, yeah and you're getting a shootout <laughs> yeah. i had to oh god i had to yeah. in america it's, it's a different uh it's a different game when you when you crash a funeral and you start shooting stuff yeah um and there's not a small funeral with about like i've seen funerals here with about 50 people and mm -hmm. that's like a child's birthday so so i'm talking about how many 20,000 people. Yeah, people traveled all the way from like South Africa, um, Senegal, or like Nigeria just to come to that funeral. So I couldn't miss it. You get it? That's the magnitude of the funeral we're talking about. This is like, this is like if Michael Jackson had died and, and, and that was the streets during his procession. Yeah, that's something crazy. And that is insane. It had a whole 20, is it 21 days? Yeah, 21 days laid out straight program like everyone has to come and pay homage homage to um the king yeah and um it was crazy i couldn't miss it for anything i was in ghana at the moment so i had to find my way to that region and um sneak my way in <laughs> talk my way out of you're you know, a wild yeah. dude did you get caught but yeah, the security wouldn't allow you in so you have to prove to them that you need to be there you know so, so did the security catch you at any one point? Yeah, they'll stop you. You can't just walk in, you know. Damn. So, but I can't tell you how I got in, but I got in. <laughs> so you had to talk your way in. You had to like talk your way out of it. Like when they caught yeah, you. Yeah, sometimes like, you need like, to. Listen, my cousin, Pookie, he right there. Just let me, they know me. They know me. I'm Mr. Pinks. I'm Mr. Pinks. I'm Mr. Pinks. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did it go about? How did it go about? What was your I name? can't tell you that on camera. <laughs> you can't? Nah, I can't. You had to bribe somebody. No, no, he, no. He did a payoff. Nah, nah. He it's nothing to do with money. <laughs> <laughs> he beat him up here. <laughs> uh, so, and I was I was really happy I did that. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's one of the, like, most, like, um, eye-opening ceremonies you can ever attend. Like there's virtually everybody in there, like from presidents to um, very powerful people, you know. So yeah, it's really top security event. And um, what was the, pre the president of Ghana was there? Yeah, the president of Ghana was there and other African countries. Sheesh. Yeah, there were a lot of like top dignitaries because this is the person who controls the land with a lot of gold in Ghana, you know. Yeah, the most deep. gold. So that's you have. Volumes. He shut down everything just for the funeral, so you have to be there. Is that how, like, is that what a celebrity is in that area? Th this is not um, a celebrity level. There's a king we're talking about. Yeah, so this, run, is, this is bigger than fame. It's bigger than that. They worship him, you know? Yeah, He's so a this king. is like, because, like, <laughs> in terms here, we don't have anything that is um, as presidented, or we don't have anything that, we don't have anything that uh, as is to that status. So trying to relate it, like, how yeah. would you relate it to, to here? That's why y'all need to travel to Africa to really um, <laughs> experience what we're talking about because you know about democracy, you know about like um, stuff like that, but you don't really know about what uh, kingship and chieftaincy and all that is. Yeah. Like, if they say someone is a royal, mm -hmm. it's it's a different thing altogether. It's way past celebrity or now. Exactly. It's, wow, it's it's crazy. I don't even know what that type, uh, that level of cloud is about. Yeah, can't, so can't. because they own the land you live on, you get it. But they own it. Usually, like, <laughs> yeah, it's a different. Here, here it's kind of different because, like, yeah. we don't like the people who own our land. We just like 
It's just a bunch of like, oh, wait, we over like a long yeah, time. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have said the F word. I'm so sorry. We're going to have to cut that out later. I understand you. Um, <laughs> Um, let's mark that. What time period are we at in this interview? Uh, we're 22 in. Wow. I remember that. 22 in, we gotta mark that out. Anyway, yeah, we don't like them. We're like, we're like, yeah, you own land, but you did it through like slavery and all these other like red roping and like impoverishing us. Mm -hmm. But there, it's kind of different. There's kind of like a respect, yeah. and it's it wasn't through a dirty means. It was nope. it was through something that was more righteous and more dignified. Yeah, and it's it's, it's uh, mostly true. Um, war and mm -hmm. sacrifice you know yeah or the people who settled on the land first so it's based you respect these people based on um their birthright or something yeah. like that because they settled in their first the land belongs to them they claimed ownership to the land you know yeah so whoever moves into that area needs to um talk to them to get a piece of the land so they can just give you land oh you want to <laughs> um do a farm on my land or you want to live close to me so you come you just strike a deal you just talk okay maybe whatever you grow on the land you give me 10 percent or something i can give you 100 acres of land so but they're they're landlords in a sense but it's like it's deeper than landlords because it's, it's like than that yeah because it's like um it, it's like that is the nation yeah and, okay, uh, that makes that makes more sense. These people were in power before um, we had democracy. We had our own systems of governance. That's like if the president of the United States has sold you a piece of land like himself and said, do something great with it. Yeah. And I'm going to take a percentage. Like, that would be kind of crazy instead of it being like some random person. And like, the funny thing is, the president. the president of Ghana can't just wake up and do something on his land. They he need to, to no, get permission. Just to get permission from the Asante Hene. Whatever is happening in the Asante Kingdom has to go through the Asante Hene. That is... I, this is amazing learning this just based on how different government systems work and different cultures mm -hmm. work. I would love to explore this more. This is like... I opening. And there are different tribes in different areas of Ghana, so that's how it works. You oh. can't just, there's just one area. I had I had some questions about that too, some mm -hmm. tribal questions. Um, okay. Shout out to all people from Ghana watching. Uh, Kwame, uh, what's good, Mo? Um, some Ghanaian followers that are, that are in here. We've got some Ghanaian pride. Uh, Kofi wanted to know what tribe you are from. Okay. He had been asking me this like all month. And I was just like, why tribe. don't you I'm, um, I'm an Ikriapim person. Ikriapim, we're from the Eastern region, so. Ibri, Aharasi, Obosmasi, all those areas, yeah. Down to Ekopong, like, it's, it's a really huge area, so I'm an Ekriapim, yeah. Okay, well, that is for Kofi. Kofi, you got your answer, and stop asking me questions. Actually, okay, <laughs> so let's say uh -huh. I'm not 100% Ekriapim. My dad is Ekriapim, mm -hmm. and my mom is Ever. So she's from the Voto region, and um, specifically Sope, close to Sogakope, so right by the river that's where our house is so um both ever and um Ikriapim, so yeah got you so it's a, mi it's a mixture it's a mixture yeah. how did your parents meet do you know i don't know <laughs> you never asked them uh okay so i know my dad rented a place in my mom's parents house okay and uh um, the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> He ran into the place off. She said, you kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think he didn't want to pay rent, so. <laughs> I think he didn't want to pay rent, so, you know. <laughs> he, he had to do what he had to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he said, hey, there's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me, you know. Nice. We're family, you know, yeah. we're family now, so I don't have to pay nothing. <laughs> what does it feel like to have this gallery approaching for you? And, like, what what is it? What is, is there excitement that you have for this gallery and its approach? Have you ever had a gallery before? No, this is my first um, ever international gallery like um, exhibition because most of my works I just put on on my um, on the internet. I just put it on my Behance profile mm -hmm. so that people could see and just um, order some prints or stuff like that. But this is my like actual printout. We had other events, but not my documentary works but this is specifically for my documentary works you know so i'm really um happy and um uh, 
um, I, I'm just hoping and praying for the best turnout and uh, response from the art community and um, curators and, um, yeah, you know, art lovers and uh, the right people, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. definitely the right people. The right people. <laughs> the right people. Um, you also, like, besides just, like, the gallery pictures that will be going up, all the photos that you took, you also have this documentary that is appearing with it. This is a video that has been yeah. shown, and, and what does it cover? Okay, so with this documentary, um, it shows, you know, uh, a picture is worth um, a thousand words. Yeah. But when you have videos, it's, it's a million words. It's a, it is, <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a nation, let me tell you. Yeah, so um, the video is just to add up to, um, to, to, to serenade the um, whole atmosphere and make the ambience feel like you are, in, you are, taking, you are really taking a walk through Ghana. Yeah. And um, with the sound and um, motion added to the pictures, so it's going to explain a lot of stuff. And um, I, I can't wait to experience it. Yeah. I told her, I was like, man, we really got to set this place off. You got to have the music. You got to have the smells. Yeah. Do you have any sense that you might bring in that remind you of what it Maybe the, like? food. <laughs> maybe the food. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to get some food in here to really yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Bring maybe. that aroma out and make yeah. people feel like they're at home with it. Yeah, we're, um, try, we're trying to bring in some street food. Like yeah. any, any songs you would play or anything? Any, um, yeah, we've got, we've got, we've got, um, we're still talking to um, people, some bands who are playing. Um, are in the country at the moment, like yeah. just playing um, summer gigs. So um, we're talking to some of them to just pass through and um, show how it really feels in Ghana. You know, yeah. We've got um, one KT group. Oh, I um, Heritage Village. Is that what it is? Um, the name just skipped me, but Herb knows what I'm talking about. So. I think it's like Kojo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Kojo. Heritage yeah, Village. we um covered him a little bit in the magazine for some of the workshops that he was doing. Yes, there. yes, yes, yes. Very fun guy. And we have the Temakwa. Temakwa. It's also Love bringing that. us some authentic um Ghanaian music, and um, I'm hoping to bring in another band. Uh, authentic Ghanaian music so just to add up to the ambience and I'm trying to bring the whole Ghana here that's what I, I'm trying I to love do. it yeah it should. that is something that is needed because I I'm so questioned I, I I'm like what is it like to travel there and how is what is a happy life there you say everybody lives health healthily healthy um is there health care what keeps them healthy is it just the way they eat is the way they live like what is it we keep some it's, healthy. it's just um contentment you know every there's no perfect place in the world yeah but when you really content with what you have and um you just live one day at a time mm -hmm. you just um expect less you are really happy you know the children out there don't really have um too much to play with you don't have like organized uh, parks and stuff like that, but they are happy. I can bet you. I it's grew up there, so like, we don't need a park where we can play in the field. We can do. We can make what we have. We play with whatever we, we get. Yeah, play. we go outside without being scared of being kidnapped or like abducted or something like that. To that just play cool. and this the whole community policing kind of stuff. You know, everyone it's knows. Tribe. Yeah, tribe. yeah. So everyone knows where you're coming from when you are an intruder. It's like small town mentality. Yeah, but these are these even happen in the cities. They know which house you are coming from, so mm. all the kids come out to play. How do you build that sense of community, or how is that sense of community there where everybody does know everybody? It's like just one generation. <sighs> it just happens. I don't know how it does, but it just happens because the community in which I grew up is um, multilingual, like mm -hmm. community, and man, you make me want to go there. And uh, yeah, and uh, very like. Um, <laughs> We had about more than five tribes living in the same neighborhood, you know? Yeah. We are living in the city. I, I grew up in Accra Newtown. It's a place, a really tough place to grow up, you know? You have to you have to prove yourself to be able to live there, you know. What, what you mean? You have to you, you, you got to prove yourself. Some hands? Oh yeah, for sure. You like some hands. it's a crime here, but it's not a crime over there, no. <laughs> nah, you don't get no. Yeah, when everybody you when, gotta when you get your ass whooped, you know where you belong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's it's normal, you know. <laughs> did, did they have games? 
No, 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 no nothing no. like that. No, it's just, it's no, just no, respect. It's no, just like, okay, you no knives, no guns, no. It's a simple male ego, male. No yeah, 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 yeah. Just survival, not guns. No, no, we don't have, we don't have time for that. <laughs> good, good, good. It's pointless. It's pointless there. Yeah, so it's just kids being kids, you know. Nice. Yeah. Because that's what's gonna happen. You're always gonna have enough. Or always someone on them for something. Like so that. when someone hoops you, you know, you don't fight with him. You rather make him your friend. Yeah. So he can protect you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how we the best go, way to know. get rid of an enemy yeah. is definitely make them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it doesn't matter what tribe you belong to or what language you speak. We we try as much as possible to um learn each other's language to um communicate. You know, in Ghana our languages um our official language is English. Yeah. So um everyone learns English in school. Yeah. But and everybody still has their personal language. Yeah, we have uh yeah they, they tie to. Yeah, so which is magical that they are they're able to keep that and they're able to uh, yeah still embrace that. Yeah, but we still have their street language, you know. Yeah. Um, we have the pidgin just like um, the Nigerians, but we have a, a slight, um, slightly different variation of um, the pidgin English. So we speak that with, uh, with um, our local languages. We just drop one or two like local languages in there, but it's still English. Yeah. So when I, when I, when I speak uh, pidgin English with you, maybe you might get one or two words, but I might tell like, yeah, it's like, it's like something okay. different. Yeah. Yeah. So. You have a real passion for this. Yeah. You're really in that. Like you, you just risked a lot to get into certain ceremonies there. From what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the driving force? Like, what inspired you to do this? I need to get this. That's me. I need to but because what, I know. As a kid, like, how, what made you think, like, okay, I'm gonna be a photographer? Okay, so you know, the funny thing is, I didn't really think about it um, that I want to be a photographer. And there's this one incident that happened whilst we were growing up. So my brother, Nana Kwame, I have just one brother. So Nana Kwame, he's my elder brother. Yeah. Uh, myself and a family friend of ours, her name, um, she's Abigail. So she came to our house. My dad had about three cameras and um, he was preparing for a funeral, you know. Yeah. So he had his film in the cameras. He bought some energizer batteries. Yeah. He placed them in and he told us he was going to go get a haircut. So he would be back in about 30 minutes or an hour. So when my dad stepped out, Sir, touch me. we just brought all the cameras out. We made Abigail stand on the center table. We yeah. gave her a microphone and she was singing and we were just wasting the film. <laughs> we're just wasting it out there you know was he was he mad my dad hadn't been like he, he was still in the barber shop so we were still in the middle of the action just wasting film taking pictures dancing in the room and my dad just got in and this is like this is like old style film it's like real yeah, old film. yeah film, it's real yeah. film it's not like so it's not like this you can't just delete the pictures yeah and it's you have to there. pay money for the film so you have to get it all developed yeah, so it was it was crazy that day. So my dad just got in, and the first thing he did was, "What's happening in here?" And the first thing Abigail said was, "Oh, she needs to use the bathroom, so she'll be right back." And she left. She did. <laughs> she, she did, did it on, on us. <laughs> so she it was just you also, you yeah, 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 yeah. So Dang, it was just bro. left with my brother and I, and my dad just brought out the king, and I was just. I started I started crying and I was like, you know, you know you can do. Yeah. Because he locked the door. He locked the door. There's yeah, no way to there's escape. There's no escape, bro. But that, that day was a very good day for me, you know. He told me, uh, you know, you are the big brother. Like that he was talking to my big brother. He was like, you know, you are the big brother. You're supposed to tell them what to do. You're supposed to know right from wrong. So I got away with that and my brother got all the ass whooping and <laughs> <laughs> no, it used to feel good as kids. Yeah, you know, man. Like, like I just escaped. The 90s, I just escaped, man. Yeah. But I remember the 90s, that, bro. Yeah, but I, I know, I know. It's it's funny how we all turned out to be photographers. Like my brother is really good with what he does. He's a photographer, also. Yeah, he's a photographer. Like he's crazy. <laughs> he's really crazy. I've seen. I, we've worked together for a while, so I know what I'm talking about. He's really crazy with it. So. That is inspiring. Yeah. And that, that was the mode. It was like, 
it was your dad buying or having that equipment that really yeah, he, yeah so he, did he do also work with cameras or no he just had the equipment because he, he just he just had cameras he used to take pictures of us every sunday before we go to um church so it was like a hobby for him yeah it was like a hobby. it, it yeah. turned into a lifestyle for you for us yeah we grew up around cameras so what uh, was the breaking moment that you think okay i discovered that i want to capture these moments that are hidden and i want to push my photography to something that is more documentary level what was that moment for you um i grew up as an artist mm -hmm. and my brother was a, um, a business person he studied business administration and um the university yeah uh but me right from high school i was doing visual arts throughout um i learned about photography when i went to um, my university um I studied graphic design for four years. I have um, a bachelor's degree in graphic design. Nice. Yeah. So, um, but my interest was I'm 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 one crazy designer. Yeah. Trust me when I say that. I used to do a lot of um, packet designs and screen printing and stuff. But photography is something I, I don't think I've ever met a photographer who isn't good in graphic design. So. Oh, okay. Really okay. Yeah. That's I, it. Works. I never have. It's just it's just like <laughs> yeah. if you take photos, you have to know how to edit those and you have to know yeah. how to bring out the lighting you have to know how to play around those settings i haven't met a yeah. single person who was bad <laughs> yeah so that was that that's it like um so right after um um the uni or mm -hmm. even whilst i was in the university i was working with my brother like we were shooting weddings a whole lot of weddings i'll, I'll just um come home every weekend we're booked every weekend we're no, just weddings are there yeah monster. but it got it got it got um a bit tiring for me it's exhausting it's exhausting and uh oh, weddings are yeah Should i was working with my brother too so you know yeah so it was it was really interesting those days we used that's 2012 2010 that way so um till and 2014 when i graduated and i yeah. went into my documentary i was like this is what i want to do I want to take my time, focus on my graphic design, make some money. You graduated uh, college in 2014? Yeah, 2014, yeah. But I was maintained um, in the university um, for a year. I was helping out. Um, I was doing my national service, and um, I was helping out with the um, photography classes and basic design. So that was what I was doing for a year. Right after that, I just uh, went fully into, um, how do you call it? Um, graphic design and mass um, production book design and yeah. stuff like that i was taking a lot of um gigs here and there i didn't work for no company after school just to have a lot of money to finance my photography trips and stuff like that yeah. mm -hmm. so have you since then have you worked with companies or yeah i rather or is it always just like freelance work you get something here freelance and work yeah. gotcha and it's been like it's been pretty good for you do you do you more so go lean towards um the photography or do you also lean towards like film side of things okay so <clears throat> sorry no you're good so um when we were getting into um this digital age and um learning about um, digital photography and all that um we were doing mostly photography and um videos so I know how to do um, movies and stuff like that. I've really worked on a couple of movie sets back in Ghana too. Nice. Yeah. Did, did you get a chance to do any of that while you were there? You're just mainly focused on like the ceremony. So I'm gonna coming for when I when I'm coming for. I'm gonna get the bag and I'm gonna do what I need to do. Yeah. So I just needed to make as much money as I could to just um, finance my trips around because it's not cheap. It's not. You know, you need to travel around. Yeah. And uh, fuel your car even before I even bought a car. You need to travel like on buses, travel some places you need to get by plane and all that. Yeah, and when you get there, you need to find accommodation and you yeah. know. So where were you staying? I was staying in hotels. I was staying in friends' houses. I was staying in um, anywhere where I can survive. <laughs> anywhere safe you know yeah this seems like a very gorilla style like like yeah, you're just yeah. out in there like okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna make do with what i have and you're yeah 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 i and i don't travel really with um heavy gear no you just keep a camera on. yeah i just keep it really light like maybe two or three lenses and one camera body maybe a spare body if i have so and just one backpack with my clothes and my um 
basic needs, my toothbrush and my slippers. <laughs> That's what I need. It's like you're like a Pokemon adventure, but you're here. The yeah, so I just scenes. casual. I just want to go in and out without being like noticed, you know. Yeah. And if anything happens, I can just run away with just one bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I travel light. Be, yeah, you always gonna be ready to duck off. Always yeah, 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 yeah. Because off. there are some events which you are not like really invited, but yeah, when you get in there, you look as presentable as possible. You have your one bag, and um. You should be able to go in there, achieve your aim and bounce. Were you capable like of making you think you form some long lasting relationships or like some friendships that do these Amazing, like, amazing, amazing. So this summer you were capable of establishing that. Yeah. I will like we still need to go back and catch more. Yeah. You can't you can't have enough content when you when you get to Ghana, you know. Yeah. Or Africa in general. My brother happened to um do a trip to about eight or nine African countries by road. <coughs> sorry, 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 sorry. So um, that's uh, my wonderful experience I would like to do because um, uh, our circles like crisscross all the time, you know. I yeah. meet people who are like, oh, are you this? Oh, I said, no, that's my brother. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> so it's still the same family, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It happens like that. And he meets people too who oh are you Kojo? I said, No, I'm Kwame. Like, yeah, he's my my younger brother. It's it's Kwame in here, that the Kwame CK that we have. Can you is that a difficult? It might be a difficult. Um I was talking to Kofi and Kofi was like, um the name Kwame, it meant a day. I had never known that it was like this a day of the week and that's yeah. the name So our names are mostly based on um the days on which you were born, you know, that's part of our tradition. So, um, what day were you born? I was born, it might have been Wednesday. A Wednesday, so. I think so. You think so? Just be sure. Yeah, <laughs> Before it might have been a you... Tuesday or Wednesday. So, if you're a Tuesday born, you'll be Kwabna. Kwabna? Kwabna. Kwabna. Yeah, Kwabna. Okay. So, I'm a Monday born, that's why I'm Kujo. So, for a Monday born, you'll be Kojo, Tuesday, Kwabna. Then it comes to um, Kweku mm -hmm. for Wednesday, Yao for Thursday, Kofi for Friday, Kwame for Saturday, and Kwesi for Sunday. Wow. Yeah. Um, so what is, what is the... What is the cultural, historical point or origin of that? There are several... There are several... Um, like um, interpretations to that, you know, mostly um, the days itself in the Amanakan, um, Amanakriapem. So um, we the days are named. So Monday is Joda or Jo Joda. So if you are born on uh, Monday, you are Kojo yeah. or Kwejo. So you, everyone knows you were born on Jo on. Joe Monday. What is the importance? Like, what's the significance? Why? Why not just name them anything or name them what you want? Why? You why can't be named name? anything. No. <laughs> why? What is? There should be a reason. Everyone is. is it was our form of um, um, how do you call it? identification? Yeah. You know, we, we, there wasn't any ID cards or anything like that. So that was just the main thing, and this became like a cultural root, and it became uh, like tradition. Everyone um, with some tribes. When you mention your name, so when I say I'm Kwejo Ej. Oh, they'll ask you, oh, AJ, which AJ, where is it, which town? So, which so they can trace you. So they know, like, okay, yeah, this is your route. Yeah, this, they can, they're grown-ups, um, especially the girls, they can, when you mention your name, they can tell you, oh, okay, you are from this town, and this yeah. your grandpa. It's a, you gotta know those who know it, know it. You, you know? gotta know your street, you gotta know yeah. your name, you gotta know. There was no street and I all that, that, so. I understand now. So there's no like street. It's, yeah. like being, it's like being a part of a street, street game. You walk onto the wrong street, you don't know what. No, what's you don't have rapping. No, bro, you not in the right place. You not that, not that. In a good way, in a good you way, you know. Way. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So when you mention your name, they know where you're from. Like you don't need to do so much explanation. They know where exactly you're from. It's like okay, because usually like most people they'll go through like all the ring ring arounds and they're like, okay, who's your grandmother? Who's this? How, yeah. you, how you know me? So that just basically ends all that. It's like, yeah. Okay. Okay. I know. I know where you're from. And um, it's easier because. Um, history tells us that like um, we have um, tribes and we have clans, you know. Yeah. So even though I'm I'm an Akan, I'm an Ikrapem, so 
I belong to a certain clan or a certain family. Yeah. So when I go to any Akan town and I'm asked um, in Tongbe, Naobo, or like uh, what clan or um, family do you belong to? And you mention the particular thing. Yeah. You'll be given free access to a room or something like that to be able to, they protect you because you're part of them. It doesn't matter where you're from. Maybe you just moved from um, Virginia and um, that is we're in Woodbridge very... and you go to New York. Maybe you're in the Bronx for two or three days to run a business or something and um, you don't have nowhere to stay. It's like no. a sense of unity. Like, yeah, so that, when they ask you, where are you from, this and that, and you are able to um, tell them your real name and stuff like that, and they know where you're from, they can hold you down. You don't need to pay nothing, or they know you are not um, a stranger. That is That's how it works. That's how the naming and stuff works, yeah. Having, that, having that root and having that, uh, that mm -hmm. sense of support, that is, that is amazing. Um, with this experience in this gallery and being able to give this experience to everybody what is your main goal okay what do you want to translate what do you want to, what do you want people to feel okay so um when you take a critical look at um the kind of works i produce mm -hmm. um these are um frozen um time or like frozen events that wouldn't happen or you wouldn't have the opportunity to see these events of the events week. Because most of these events are going extinct, or yeah, like in the next, I, I'm I'm yet to say like next 20 or 15 years, yeah. most of these things are not going to be happening. So whilst I'm alive and whilst I'm able to observe these kind of traditional and uh, spiritual events, why not just preserve the memory? Wow, that's that's my main objective, you know. It's because like, most of most of these things haven't been really interpreted um, in in a good way. Most of these um, events have been idolized and um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, given a, a negative how do you call it a negative uh, connotation. Connotation, you get it. Yeah. But it has when you when you meet these people, I always take the time to like talk to these natives, like try to understand what the symbolic meaning is and um, what it stands for. And when you get to know what's happening and you relate it to some of the activities that happened in the Bible, yeah. it's really funny that most of these things are, are, are right there in the Bible. You know, when you get to these events and you ask them why they do these things, most of these things are in the Bible. Like, And funny enough, people don't want to even learn about it, you know. They don't it even does, take does the Ghana time. have a very strong connection to um, Christianity? Yeah. Um, Ghana is um, it's a Christian nation, even though we have a lot of Muslims too. I grew up in uh, a Christian and Muslim neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I have a mox right behind my house. You know, right behind my house, it's a yeah. mox. So they wake me up every morning. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's... And uh, it's beautiful how we um, live in unity, you know? Yeah. We have uh, Muslims and Christians living I think that's together. That's a beautiful yeah. part because you, what, what's been able to be established there is that sense of unity in the community that is like, it bridges all barriers yeah. to where there is no problem with language, there's no problem with different religious sects, there's no problem with different regional conflicts. It is mm -hmm. basically everybody's looking out for everybody. Yeah. And, and it's just amazing, like, um, when we go to school, um, I don't know if the um, education syllabus has really changed or yeah. it's still the same, but we used to learn about the Islamic religion, so we know what really, um, what really happens um, when they... Um, we know what exactly happens when um, India worship and they know what exactly happens in our worship you know um yeah my i think it was was it last christmas or last um two christmas my dad gave me a coin was like oh our church is in a muslim neighborhood and when it was christmas the muslims in the neighborhood uh, bought the church gifts for christmas they represent this hey, even though this yeah and they even sang a christmas carol that is so in the nice. church and so that's the um how do you call it like 
um, level of tolerance and level of um, unity we have. Because even part of my family is Muslim. I wish we had that here. Like, it feels like any difference here is like it's to be demonized. When anybody's different, they demonize you for it. It's any any slight difference that it may be. It's like okay, you're different in this way. It's time to demonize you. Yeah, and it's like. Bro, we all we all believe the same. We all read the same. It's Christians. it's funny how when um it's Christmas, the Muslims come home to eat yeah. your food, and when is their eat, we are rushing to get a bite of their uh, how do you call it their uh, beef. They they prepare the best beef you can ever taste. You know, I like that. Yeah, so it's just that mutual respect we have for each other that makes Ghana a very wonderful place. You know, and the funny fact is um our president is christian and our vice president is muslim i see I, I feel like it it's it's never been a sense like we we play it here like there's a sense like none of these things can work together but it's never been that it's always that people have never been willing to try mm -hmm. or they use it in the atmosphere that gets them reelected because they can play off the hate yeah and they and, love to play off hate but there's there's love and you can play off love too and i feel like that's that's what's there it's, it's just a matter of um respect you know yeah and that, that's, uh, that's the word respect respect you have to respect um each other's beliefs you know you don't you don't demonize someone's belief that's what they believe so far as they are not offending you or they are not harming you in any way why not respect what they believe in you know yeah. because when um when we have in parties or street jams or whatever in our community we know it's, um there are muslims there so when it's six o'clock they need to go and pray yeah so every dj who has ever worked in um, a muslim community would stop at six o'clock and wait for them to do their prayer and continue that's how it works like who, everyone who has lived in a um muslim Muslim or like um I like that you all have that understanding. Yeah, it's just a mutual understanding, yeah. That's that's sacred. Um <laughs> This has been an amazing interview. I, yeah. I I didn't expect to learn so much yeah. in terms of everything that goes on in Ghana. I don't know what else to say more about your gallery other than I love the pictures. I love the fact that you're presenting the documentary, the mm -hmm. fabrics. I had not touched on the fabrics. I, yeah. I'm bringing you more mannequins. I'm going to bring you some more mannequins. I was supposed to bring some today. Yeah. But I got to bring you some more mannequins tomorrow and, yeah. um, so we can drape them all in fabrics and find some more fashion designers that can actually yeah, style true. drapes. Yeah. But, um, and are these, the fabrics? These, these fabrics are um, hand-woven fabrics. You know, they are woven like... How did you, how did you acquire this? Yeah, I, I got them from... Um, a place in Asante region, um, which is believed to be um, the origin of the best game tea, but there are different sides to a story, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> different tribes claim ownership to the Kinte cloth, but um, yeah. that's the most like popular place people know about that. Because of my um, travels around Ghana, I've, I've been to other places who also claim ownership to that cloth. You know, everybody's yeah. like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's, it's still amazing, like, the kind of patterns and intricate designs they produce with these. It's uh, very beautiful. Like, yeah. I've seen people these walk by, clothes, they yeah. stop, they look in the mirror, they're like, okay, what is this? Yeah. And they're, and they're kind of shocked at first because they don't really know whether or not, like, yeah. mainly whether or not this is, like, a clothing store. Or, like, yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody's going to be shocked to see that this yeah. is gallery. Yeah, so I went to um, Bonre to bring um, some of the Kente, and um, uh, I'll be happy to set up the loom. the loom yeah the loom you're gonna actually bring a loom in. yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully you're trying to get a sewing machine in here you're gonna bring a loom first yeah i'm i'm that is i'm just it's, it's a, um the traditional loom the original loom that's used to um manufacture or weave this kind of fabrics you know it's hand woven and uh it takes a whole lot of time it to just put Looms one piece together so these pieces are not uh, are not cheap. <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah, they are not cheap. And those you fabrics know? look like they're such high quality fabrics. Yeah, and very heavy, you know. Yeah, very big. <laughs> yeah, very heavy too. So, yeah. um, question for you, and this is a question that I like to ask every single artist and anybody that aspires to be something that is that is grand. Uh, you, you've done a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself in your art? five years i'm um, looking at um 
moving my exhibition um, internationally, you know, moving about, showing this work, telling my stories yeah. and showing people uh, what kind of um, stuff we have made of, you know, when you let people tell your stories, yeah, it's different, you know. Yeah, when is. you are the one telling your own story, you know what it is and you know what it means to you. Yeah. As black people, as Africans, we need to embrace ourselves and um, tell our stories the way we understand this, rather than allowing um, people, someone else to tell your story without really understanding what it really is or how important it is to you. They might um, do a good job or they might just... Um, mess it up for you <laughs> and most of the time it's the yeah, latter you know yeah, it's <laughs> they like, mess it up yeah it's, it's and, not a fire, but they have yeah 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 i've seen a whole lot of stuff that um on the internet that's not really mm -hmm. accurate you know yeah it's it's um stories that are just turned upside down or <laughs> yeah and the meanings are uh the opposite, you know. Yeah. But I'm I'm from Ghana. I'm originally from Ghana. I've traveled. I've taken my time to really understand what um, these practices mean and uh, how important they are um, to us as humans and um, as Africans. So um, it will be a privilege for me to travel around and show this kind of works, not in a demeaning way, but in a very like positive light. You know, most of the pictures people see are like negative pictures of africa and hunger and All just but and it's like we don't get to we don't get to explain that narrative that no that's not what it is that's this not is, what it it's is. like when they always um they always show mexico and mexico is like in the sapia color yeah 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 it's yeah. Sapia filter and it's yeah. like and they're just going to show certain parts of mexico that's just like gang it's like no yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, just yeah. that it's it's never just that and we shouldn't be giving these places that have beauty have people in there mm -hmm. that are living life and celebrating life yeah we shouldn't give it that narrative to distract yeah from what they have or yeah and uh, it's mostly about hunger and all that yeah. i've seen hungry people in um america too so i've seen hungry people yeah just yeah. like driving here yeah in I've, I've seen and people would go to dc that. you'll yeah. see a bunch of people that are hungry yeah and i'm like well, well this, this, this is not what we were told you know this is not what, what we've seen yeah so um it's not it's not our fault you know we need to tell our stories. America has done a really good job with advertising their country and making it um, what it is today. Like, yeah, you wouldn't know what I mean, but like, no, I definitely know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> everybody comes here and yeah, and they, everybody comes here because they they seen it. And they we've seen it on TV, and um, we believe it's uh, heaven on earth. And then, then you come here. <laughs> yeah, and we are all here, and we see uh, you need to work in heaven. So <laughs> yeah, heaven yeah. Have days off. Yeah, 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 and days off. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone in heaven is working. So yeah. So, and I'm looking at selling and putting my work in um, very um, nice places. Mm -hmm. And so most of the works I'm going to put up are going to be for sale. Nice. So, um, so anyway. they'll, be, they'll be sold, and but they'll stay up into the gallery, until the gallery comes down, and then they will yeah. go off yeah. Yeah. to yeah. Um, yeah. the buyer. Yeah, just limited um, numbers. So I'm looking at selling it um, to some galleries and um, anyone who is willing to give me a fair price for my my artwork so yeah definitely definitely get that <laughs> yeah get that fair price yeah <laughs> lean on lower these are spectacular pictures these are spectacular yeah photos that that you have come back with and you risked a lot for them so yeah make make the worth known of how how much it took for you to get these photos and the posts what you had to do on posts to make them look that gorgeous yeah it takes a whole lot of work but yeah <laughs> the main thing is the story behind them. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm looking forward to those stories being told in your documentary. Yeah, the um, documentary will be um, we're looking at putting up a documentary, like a full-length documentary, and also um, publish um, a journal or a photo book, mm -hmm. which will have uh, most of the pictures and um, a write-up to it you know but that's not coming with this particular exhibition a walk through ghana the first edition that's not coming that's coming in subsequent um um exhibition so gotcha. you should stay tuned and uh i'm, I'm uh, excited to see it all yeah thank you uh Hojo, for talking to me this has been a very exciting painting with friends interview uh, 
I painted something. You never picked up the pencil. You seem yeah. so enthralled and like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't gonna stop you. I was like, yo, he's really going off. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and you had such a, a a clear candor in your voice. I was just like, yeah, I'm not stopping. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I need to. I need to, I need to go. I need to. I need to spit everything out. <laughs> uh, I, I I did something I thought was gonna freak everybody out. <laughs> but uh, you got you got like close to uh, I don't know. <laughs> It was close. <laughs> close to nothing. <laughs> I'm very excited to see your exhibit. And thank you for bringing it back to us because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are. Is it one hour already? Huh? Is it an hour already? Yeah, it's been an hour. Wow. Um, thank you for bringing it back here because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to appreciate it and appreciate what we've done. We have a large uh, community of people that are from Ghana and Woodbridge. And I'm pretty sure spread out spread out all across like Prince William. Yeah. So they're going to be very appreciative and it gives finally a voice that is necessary mm -hmm. to places people don't get to see. And it ends a lot of misconceptions. Yeah. The main, the main thing is the misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to straighten things out, you know? Yeah. Let people understand what things mean mm -hmm. and not assume stuff, you know? Yeah, assumptions are could be made by anybody. Uh, assumptions, yeah. Are, assumptions are, are are the worst. Yeah, of humanity. <laughs> but what what what, what would it take for you to just ask someone a question rather than just assume? It I'm takes nothing. It takes a smart person to do that. So, are you going to be here while the gallery is open, at answering yeah. questions? Yeah, I'll be here on the first day, the opening, and um. I can't promise it's, it's going to last a whole month. So, so you're like, I'm, I'm going to be in and anything. out. I'm going to be in he and said, out. Yeah. Grand opening. He said, I got science. I'll be here throughout. Like, yeah. Yeah. But not, I'm not five to nine. No, no, not, not like nine to five. Yeah. No, he I'll be here. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be here. Yeah. Well, thank you again for talking to us. Um, I am Bad Hayes. This has been Painting with Friends. We just interviewed Kodro. Kod Kodro. 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 <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is to read Kodro yeah. and come see his Ghanaian experience and his art exhibit that is going up August 19th here at Open Space Arts. Also, we have some other events going down. If you would like to come to our Kanjutsu event that is August 20th, we are doing an anime con gaming event tournament. There will be musical performances by myself. Soup Doop will be there. He will also be performing. There will be some other musical guests. We have voice actors such as Chuck Horber, who is the voice of Android 17. We have a gaming tournament of Super Smash Brothers. There will also be various Twitch cosplayers that are very big in the Twitch cosplaying community and anime community that you really want to see. Tickets are online at Kanjutsu.com. You can ask us for links if you need them. Definitely hit us up. I am at Vaz Hayes if you need questions answered. And that's all the promotions that I'm doing for today. We are all good to sign out, Aaron.